Hey everyone, it's Jason and Alice at the movies. And we're back to review uh, two more horror films. And sometimes these horror films are so scary I can barely watch them. But Alice helped me out. And we're doing two anthology films. And they're uh, Drive-In Horror and Scream Time. And I really hope you like this video. Another special thanks to Tony Town for making this awesome thumbnail and Alice thanks him too. And I hope you enjoy the video which starts uh no. Hey my Legion, how y'all doing? I'm here with another movie review is with uh, Jason and Alice at the movies now. I'll probably upload this later on in the week, but this is recorded on a Sunday while I still have Alice. Fun up Alice. Fun up. You got it? You in that room? Okay. And Alice and I Oh honey. Hmm. Yeah, this is tails hitting the garbage can. Alice and I are going to review Drive-In Horror Show and Scream Time. Now, Drive-In Horror Show was on Fright Flicks and Scream Time was on Netflix. And, like I said, they have commercial breaks on Fright Flicks. And Drive-In Horror Show was a long one. That was like an hour and 41 minutes. For, for Fright Flicks, that was pretty long, especially when <clears throat> I was reviewing like that bikini bloodbath Christmas that was only uh, 71 minutes and there was a lot of commercial breaks during this one and then usually sometimes there might be one commercial two commercial or three commercial between breaks every time there was a commercial there was like three commercials a ton of commercials that's what my dad didn't like about Fright Flicks but that's why it's free on uh, Roku that's a free internet channel and I, I like Fright Flicks and lots of good horror films on there well some good ones and this one revolves, uh, they talk about the drive-in theater, how it stopped being popular. There's still one in, uh, I can't remember where it's at. We still have one, and that's it. And it's sad about that. And then they talk about, they say the drive-in became less and less popular, and then there was an apocalypse. There was a giant nuclear explosion, and then it's the wasteland, and there's, the only people running the drive-in in this movie are like uh they have a projectionist that's kind of like well he can talk normal but he's kind of screwed up his face is a little bit screwed up with some makeup and stuff he's like your whore host and there's like a little guy his henchman they call him billy troll but he looks like a mutated zombie thing there's zombie frank who works the uh the tickets gives out the tickets and then there's a girl that works uh a teenage victim or something like that. she's like a dead girl with an axe in her back and she gives out the popcorn and then they talk about there's like five movies. There's like little two reeler things. Not well, one reeler thing that they play. The first story, and oh, and these are both anthology horror films. I'm we're reviewing probably one of my favorite ones. I haven't seen a lot of good ones in a while, and they don't make them that much anymore. And the first one on here, there's five stories. The first one here is called Pig, and basically it's a. Oop, Alice's attention's drawn by truck going by. And uh, it's basically about this girl, and she has this guy in a bathtub, and she has him glued inside the bathtub with some like industrial paste glue or something like that. And she said, and she's running the water, and she said she wants him to drown because apparently she did the whole Bill Cosby thing. She gave he gave her a roofie, and then when she woke up, she was having he was having sex with her because they were all wasted or something. But this happened way before the Bill Cosby thing. This was made in 2009. And then she gave him a bunch of roofies. And then he was unconscious. And then when he woke up, he was glued in the bathtub. She had the water run. She was talking stuff like that. They didn't have any water barely in the tub. That was a big continuity error. You know, she was talking. She had it on full bladder. It didn't want to take the tub that much to fill up. Until it was needed for the tub to fill up with water. That's That was the biggest problem with that one. But I mean... It was a pretty much a straightforward story. There's no real spoilers in here. Most of the stories in here are straightforward. The second one was called The Closet. And it's about this young kid that was uh, pretty much berated by his family. He wasn't hit or nothing. Like his uh, his dad would always yell at him. And his sister was, uh, they looked upon his sister pretty highly. They didn't look upon him highly. They thought he was just a dumb dreamer because he wanted to be an astronaut. And his mother was, uh, Probably that night, I wasn't nice to him either, you know. And there was a monster in his closet that was calling them for him to bring each one to him so he'd kill her. And then he said, your life would be great. 
And then every time he had like a giant smile on his face, I mean, you don't feel too bad for the kid because he was always like, this family sucks. And he had a big smile on his face and stuff like that. It was, it was comedic in some ways. You know, and he, and it was a pretty much a straightforward story. The monster looked really silly though. The third story was called, uh, here's the one I forget. All falling apart. And it's basically about this doctor who contracts this weird disease for either from the government or from aliens. That causes him to literally fall apart. And this one was pretty gross. And it was pretty much a straightforward story also. The next story is called Meat Man. And it was about like a serial killer that. Well the guy who killed one lady. And then he's pretty much considered like a boogeyman. Well he killed. It was a serial killer. Uh, they said he killed one person. But he must have killed more people than that. And he's pretty much considered like a boogeyman of the kids. Now this story was a little bit different. But I don't want to give anything away. And uh, the last story is called The Watcher. And it's about like, um, they said they saved the best for last. And it was uh, about two couples who want to go in the woods and uh, find a primo uh, camping spot. That's where they're going there. And where they can shoot their weapons and pretty much do whatever they want. And they have like their, like a beach there, kind of. And all this other stuff. And they go there and there's, apparently there's this... Cannibal, this wild cannibal man known as the Watcher there. And that's a pretty straightforward story, too. Uh, all in all, the movie's very entertaining. And it's from the same company that did Hayride. And the first Hayride was a real disappointment. But, I mean, they keep everything moving at a pretty decent pace. Like I said, the stories, are for, for the most part, are straightforward. But they're, they're entertaining. I enjoyed them. And if you stay tuned during the credits, they actually even go for, they even have, like, a music video. Where like uh, unrelated to the rest of the movie, where this band plays, they sound, they sound like uh, the guy singing sounds kind of like Ian Gillian from Deep Purple, but that's not them. And they show like uh, these females uh, beating up a bunch of zombies, and I mean it's throughout the credits. It's pretty cool. So I I, I really enjoyed it. I'd probably give it a about a nine and a half out of ten. The gore is very well done, and it's actually very interesting. Now, the second story is called Scream Time. And the way I found out about this is on Netflix. Oh, I think it was last year. I found they had Scream 4 on there. The one Scream movie I didn't see. And I watched about 20 minutes. I was late at night, and then I kind of got tired. And then I I just shut off the TV and went to bed. I kind of forgot about the movie. And then I wanted to maybe do a review with Alice, right? And I went to look it up. And they didn't have it on there no more. They had Scream 1, 2, and 3 on there. And I've seen those, all those at the movie theater. And the Scream movies are good for like one viewing. And that's pretty much about it. I think the Scream movies really killed the horror franchises. Really. And then, I mean, and then they had, I know what you did last summer. But that's all they had. The horror, the horror uh, genre was pretty much kind of dead for a couple of years. Until they finally started bringing some of the franchises back. And then they killed, and then they screwed them all up with the remakes. Well, anyways, uh, because they had a bunch of Scream-related thing, they had a whole bunch of Scream-related stuff on there. And there was a movie called, including the American Scream, which I saw about uh, people making makeshift haunted houses, which is awesome. I did a review of that back in January of 2014. Awesome, awesome movie. Well, apparently there was a movie called Scream Time, uh, a B movie from the 80s, and I love 80s horror films. I never heard of it before. And it's an anthology film series too. And I'm so glad to see it, you know. And I wish they'd have more stuff like that on Netflix. And basically it revolves around these two guys in New York. And they go into this video rental place and they steal a, a, like three movies. And then they take off to the, down the subway system. A guy goes to chase them and then he gives up. And they go back to this girl's house, and she's taking a shower, so they have, and she's naked, so they show a little bit of nudity. And she comes down, and, they, and she has a top-loading VCR. I never, I mean, you see those, uh, at least in the, when I went to high school, they had top-loading VCRs. I never had one. I had a side-loading one. But the very first VCR we had was like a wire remote, not a wireless remote. Like, uh, they have a remote, and it's like a 20-foot wire, and you plug it in. They, uh, I mean, it was really, oh, you okay, Alice? You okay? She bumped her head, but she's okay. Now she bumped the <laughs> bumped the uh, lawn chair or the lawn furniture I have. It's okay, Alice. 
and uh, you know we had that it was a very old VCR but it lasted a long time that was the very first VCR well anyways she had a top loading VCR and then the guys go we're gonna check out these movies and she said all right but be uh but be uh well, I'm going to go somewhere. And the other guy makes ends up making out with her. And uh, all of the three segments are made in England. The the stuff, the intro footage was made in New York, but the, the stories were made in England. And they don't say what the stories are called. Well, they mention the, the third one, but they don't say what the other stories are called. The first one involves like this uh, puppeteer who, uh, and he's victimized by his family too. They say he uh, needs to burn all his puppets. He's an old guy. He has a stepson who's a real jerk, and he runs like an old-fashioned Punch and Judy show. And then his stepson actually ends up burning down his uh, stand. And I was getting really angry for. I felt bad for the guy. And then uh, they end up getting. Uh, he ends up getting his revenge, and that's well. I kind of predicted how the story would end, but I mean that was a good one. And uh, the second one was about a girl that they move into this house, and this girl has all these strange visions. I don't want to give away any more. That's uh, kind of hard to describe that one, but it's really good. The third one uh, is about this uh, guy who's hard in his luck. He needs money. He works at this one clothing store, and the guy said he's not going to give him any more money. And then he offers to, uh, offers to loan him $40. And uh, his one friend calls up, and he asks if he wants this gardening job to help on uh, help him on the side. And then he said no, and then he calls back, and he, said, and he decides to do it. And he goes, and there's these two old ladies, and they say that uh, he's a gardener, and he says, like, this house is, uh, the old lady said these, asked him if he believed in fairies. And he said these fairies and gnomes help uh, run the house and stuff like that, and he just needs them to be, a, like, a little bit of handyman a gardener. He didn't believe them. And he did some fix-it work, and they saw, and then she went to pay him, and they found that they have a lot of money. So he decides to rob them. And then all hell breaks loose. Well, kind of. It gets a little silly. Well, that one gets silly, but I liked it. I really enjoyed this one, too. I give this a 9.5 out of 10, too. Very quick credits at the very end. It doesn't give a lot of information. I couldn't find any information on uh, on Wikipedia about this movie at all. But it's very good if you get a chance to see it on Netflix. I mean, it's, it's a cheesy 80s movie, but I really enjoyed it. It's called uh, Scream Time. So... And pretty much the only other anthology movies I saw was on Fear, uh, Fearnet back in 2012. I saw something called Chiller or Chillerama Theater, which is actually pretty filthy. And it had like a giant sperm monster. It became like Spermzilla or something like that. That was a that was a kind of a dirty one. But I mean, it was very entertaining. And then I saw the VHS movies on uh, Netflix. I like those real well, too. So there you have it for me and Alice. Our view of... Uh, Alice is just laying on the, laying on the porch like a good girl. Uh, our reviews of Drive-In Horror Show and Scream Time. So until next time, bye, please. Take care, my legion, for me and Alice. Like I said, uh, this is being filmed Sunday afternoon. Uh, probably upload this sometime during the week. So hope you all having a good time. And I'm going to miss Alice. She's going to be leaving Monday. I'm going to miss her. I love her very much because she. My sister says she really misses her, so I'm going to miss her too. So, Until next time, take care, everyone. Sit, boo-boo, sit. Good dog. Roof, roof.